I'm like a, I suppose I'm like a tomcat, <laughs> ginger tom. Yeah, if you put me, I'd go mental if you put me in brick and mortar. Both of them openly admit that they would find it hard to live indoors now because of some of the hurt and abuse that has happened to them in the past. This is Shantytown Totnes Styley, yeah? This is my house. Another look inside. I never broke in here. I never broke in here. There's no door on it. There's butter on the wall there. And that's it. That's my house. This is flat too. <laughs> they gave me two days to leave from here. I mean, they're not even using it. But Mandy felt protected because you I'm next door. One. Got security like there, so if anybody comes round here, Mandy felt safe after what had happened to him. I think she probably spoke about it, but she knew they had to get past me to get to here. There was a garage there, and Mandy and I lived there for what, a year? I cried like that them, they but... knocked it down, didn't I? So we then moved into here. This used to be a bike shed, right? <laughs> <laughs> it had an asbestos roof on it. We so they took the roof. We, we did, yeah, the BT geezers caught us, but... <laughs> Brought us a cup of tea out. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about having a sex life on the street. You know what I mean? Mandy and I were in love then, you know what I mean? We probably will always love each other, but, you know, we move on. They took the roof off. <laughs> So I couldn't sleep in there anymore. So we moved in there. All I was looking for was somewhere to, to live yeah. and breathe and just be me. If a vulnerable person comes through the door at the drop-in centre, the first thing that they will receive is a welcome and they will be made to feel accepted exactly as they are. Whether they are filthy, dirty, um, or really run down, they will be accepted. We basically try and help people that are on the streets to come off the streets to get some place to live. If they've got bad addictions, we can signpost them to places where they can get help. We've got a listening ear to be here for people to say to them that this is a safe place where you are most welcome and we want to engage with you because we see you as an important person. Three or four nights ago I had a phone call very late at night from Joe Salita who had ended up on the streets and had nowhere to go. The reality was that there was no official place that she could go at that moment. This caravan and we're just next to the Royal Mail. <laughs> That's my new address. Two people was sleeping here last night and I, this is my bed, I slept here. So we are three people in a caravan. At the moment we are working alongside um, the council and other agencies to try and find her somewhere to live. But the reality is that, that today her worldly goods are stacked up here in my office and she has nowhere at the moment to sleep tonight. Over the last 16 years, I've had many people that have, that have phoned back after not hearing from them for years and saying, Mark, thank you so much for what, what you and the drop-in centre did for me when I was at the lowest point in my life. 